Hey, Living Waters International Church, and I want to say welcome to our fire in the summer. Today is a special treat. My good friend, Pastor Chino Echeverria, is going to be preaching today from Greater Church in Kennesaw, a church plant that's only three years old, but is growing and thriving in the city of Kennesaw under the leadership of Pastor Chino. And you will not want to miss his anointed preaching and teaching today. He's such a special gift to our fellowship, to our ministry, but also to me personally. He's a young man that I love tremendously, love his ministry and love what he's doing for Kennesaw and what he's doing in the greater Atlanta area. And so without further ado, here you go. Pastor Chino, take it away. Living Waters International Church. What's going on? Pastor Chino here from Greater Church in Kennesaw, Georgia. I'm excited to be with you here today. Come on, fire in the summer. Thank you so much. I'm honored by our friends, Jason and Karen Rowland down there. Your pastors, some of the greatest pastors on earth. Riverdale, you're turning upside down August 2nd. I can't wait till you guys flip that city upside down and you get back together. It's a family reunion, baby. I might come down there and just hang out with you guys that day. Hey, I'm excited. I got a word that I want to share with you today that I believe is relevant to the season that we find ourselves in. And I want you to do me a favor and turn in your Bible to Luke chapter 8. And I'm going to be reading verses 40 through 56. Luke chapter 8, verses 40 through 56. And it says, so it was when Jesus returned that the multitudes welcomed them for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus and he was a ruler of the synagogue and he fell down at Jesus's feet and begged them to come to his house. For he had an only daughter of about 12 years of age and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes thronged him. Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any came from behind and touched the border or the hem of of his garment and immediately her flow of blood stopped and Jesus said who touched me when all denied it Peter and those with him said master the multitudes throng and press you and you say who touched me but Jesus said somebody touched me for I perceive power going out from me now then the woman who saw that she was not hidden she came trembling and falling down before them she declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately and he said to her daughter be of good cheer your faith has made you well go in peace while he was still speaking someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him your daughter is dead do not trouble the teacher and when Jesus heard it he answered saying do not be afraid only believe and she will be made well and when he came into the house he permitted no one to go in it except Peter James and John and the father and mother of the girl now all wept and mourned for her but he said do not weep she is not dead but sleeping and they ridiculed him knowing that she was dead but he put them all aside took her by the hand and called saying little girl arise then her spirit returned she rose immediately and he commanded that she be given something to eat and her parents were astonished but they charged but he charged them not to tell no one what had happened hey over the next few minutes I want to speak to you from this idea pardon the interruption I'm believing this is going to be practical I'm believing that there's going to be some spiritual breakthrough in the midst of this would you would you actually pull out a piece of paper grab your phone take some notes because I promise you these are moments that today God's going to speak to you but these are moments that as you continue to walk on this journey through this season and the next the issues and the things that God is going to speak to this day I believe are going to be instrumental the notes that you take today to be able to get through that season so I want to preach to you again from this idea, pardon the interruption. Come on, let's pray. Father, I love you. I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that we have to come before your presence. I pray John 3.30, Lord, let me decrease that you may increase. Let it be your words. I pray, Father, that now as this voice, Lord God, and this image goes into a camera, Lord God, that on the other side, that you would anoint it, Father God, that you would open the ears, Lord God, that you would remove any type of plan or strategy that the enemy would try to place over them, Lord, to cause interruptions, Lord God, to cause a, a discomfort, Lord God, or distractions in this moment, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would speak directly to their hearts. Lord, that you will bring about the freedom, Lord God, that you so desperately desire in their life, Lord. Do the work that only you can do, Jesus. It's in your beautiful name that we pray, Lord. Amen and amen. Pardon the interruption. Hey, as I look at the season that we're in right now and what seems like, man, going on four months now, for those of you that don't know, uh, COVID has completely turned the planet upside down. 
And it's crazy because if you think about it, for just a few months ago, I don't know where you were. I don't know the financial space that you were in your relationship. I don't know what it looked like in church. I don't know what your life looked like, but I do know that there was an interruption that happened, not only in your life, but in everybody's life across the entire planet. Um, I don't know of another time that has marked our history the way that it was marked because of COVID. Here's where I, I, I land in this story. I pick it up with this guy called Jarius. He was a ruler of the synagogue. Basically, he was just a pastor, kind of like Pastor Jason, Pastor Karen. They ran the church. Jesus was there just a few chapters before. And the Bible says that there was a man that had a withered hand. And this man, it was Sabbath. And they wanted to see, and they wanted to see if Jesus was going to actually do something or do work on the Sabbath. And the Bible says that Jesus said to the man, stretch out your hand. Look at the flick of the wrist. All of a sudden, the man's hand was completely healed. And at that very moment, Jarius, as well as the other religious Jews that were there, kicked Jesus out of the synagogue and began to plan on how they might kill him. But you fast forward the tape all of a sudden, the same Jarius that kicked Jesus out of the synagogue was finding himself in a space where he had a 12 year old daughter that was at the point of death. And as we read in the story, who actually had died. The Bible says that he comes to Jesus. Can I tell you that this is super pivotal in your life right now? And I'm not going to scream and I'm not going to pitch a fit, but I want you to understand that wherever you find yourself on a journey, maybe you kick Jesus out of a, a decision that you made. Maybe you kick Jesus out of a relationship. Maybe you kicked him out of your own life and you said, Jesus, I want to do this thing on my own. I want to come here today. This little black Cuban wants to tell you that you can still come to Jesus, that the doors are still open, that he won't turn his back on you, that it doesn't matter how far you think you strayed. It doesn't matter how many things you think you put in the way that Jesus is strong enough to remove every obstacle and allow for you to come and have a relationship with him. The Bible says that he comes to Jesus and tells him, I have a daughter who is sick. Would you come and would you come and heal her this day? There's a couple of coins that I think are on both sides in this in this situation. Number one, I think that it's me and you that we have sin, that we have no. He who has sin is me. I've made mistakes. I've done really bad things. You've made mistakes. You've done really bad things. But that we have an a, a opportunity that we can actually come to Jesus, that it isn't what we've done, but everything that he's done, that regardless of the mistakes that we've made in life, that there is still an open door for you to come and that Jesus actually he turns to you and that he actually speaks to you with favor. Like Pastor Jason said last year, last week, he actually gives you blessings and he actually blesses you. Isn't it beautiful that this Jesus that we're talking about, he puts an example also of the other side of the coin of what me and you need to look like. Because this was Jarius who had just kicked Jesus out of the synagogue a few chapters ago. He had all right to say, yo, I'm not going with you anywhere. You kicked me out of church, bro. Like there's no way that I'm coming to heal your daughter. But isn't it beautiful that the Bible says that Jesus turns from everything that he was doing and he begins, he's interrupted and he begins to lean into the interruption and begin to walk with Jarius. It's a model for me and for you because there are family members, friends. There are people who are watching your every single move and most of the times they're scrutinizing you and they're making fun of you and they're saying, I can't believe that you're going back to church August 2nd and all of this stuff that's happening, are you crazy? And they will begin to put all of these dark clouds around you and make it seem as if you're wrong. But in this season, I want to tell you that you can't turn, you can't pivot. In this season, you need to be that person that is a rock and a solid foundation that you need to turn to the people that spit on you, the people that backstabbed you, the people that said things about you, those are the very people that God might lead into your life for you to be a blessing. That's why when we play basketball, and I know I, I, I kind of got a little unhealthy, unhealthy with this whole COVID thing. You know, my muscles used to be in different places. Now they all accumulated in one space in my belly. Uh, my equilibrium's off a little bit. But when I play basketball, I, I, I understand that this is a, a contact sport, that it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, not a contact sport, but it's a high exertion of energy that I'm going to have fun with. But in this moment, um, whenever you, I don't know if you've ever had this, fellas, you slap somebody, you foul somebody. All of a sudden, like you say foul or you scream or you raise your voice. Um, ladies, y'all know when you go to your in-laws house or when you go to your parents house or when you go to a friend's house, an auntie, when you go to a family gathering and all of a sudden you just raise your voice. Like you just say something passionate and then they turn to you and they give you these words that I know everybody watching right now has received these words. Oh, I thought you supposed to be a Christian. Because I raised my voice, I lost my religion. Because I raised my voice, I'm no longer a Christian. I think there's a reason why they say that to you. 
I think because when all hell breaks loose in their own life, they want to know that there's somebody that's real. They're going to have very strenuous lines and they're going to have a very clear picture of what it looks like for you to be a Christian. And maybe it's way out of the realm of anything that is possible for me or for you to live out. But they're keeping this thin line because they need somebody that's real. See, there are moments that people are going to laugh at you. There are moments that people are going to talk about you, but it's going to circle back and they're going to need you. And in that season, you need to be that solid rock that doesn't move. This was the example that Jesus was, that he didn't relent, that he didn't say, hey, you need to wait, that he didn't do the Lazarus thing and say, hey, I'm going to stay here for about three more days or two more days or four more days. No, no, no. He actually turned and he began to walk with Jairus, Jairus who kicked him out of the synagogue and Jairus who plotted to kill Jesus. Yet Jesus walks with him to go resurrect and heal what which was Jairus thought his daughter. And then we're introduced to an interruption, a famous story that has been preached up, down, left and right. And I'm praying that today I can show you a couple of angles that maybe you haven't seen or maybe you haven't heard. And I'm praying that today you would find breakthrough and that you would find practical steps out of this story of the woman with the issue of blood. I I don't know if this was the season that you found yourself in pre-COVID where you felt like you were Jarius and you felt like you had a need or maybe you were the daughter and you felt like you were in desperate need and Jesus, it felt like things were working. You finally signed the contract. The business began to move. The relationship started getting better. You stopped smoking. You stopped drinking. You stopped going certain places and all of a sudden now it feels like the world just flipped on his head and you're sitting there locked down at your house and you're like, yo God, what just happened? Like I tried to do everything right. I felt like you were walking with me And all of a sudden now I just got slapped with an interruption and I'm stopped in my tracks, my destiny, my purpose. I'm not allowed. I'm not moving forward. I want you to put a finger on that note right there because I want to come back and I want to speak to you. Come along this journey as we find this woman who is the issue of blood, this woman who is given the title of the woman with the issue of blood, not her name, but her circumstance. The issue that she's dealing with has identified and became her identity. This woman who had spent everything that she had to get herself cured and found herself in a space where she didn't have anything else left to do. These are the moments that God shows up the most. It's in the moments of lack that you begin to see the strength of God. When I am weak, he is strong. You'll never know that he's a provider until you have a need. You'll never know that he's a healer until you're sick. You'll never know that he is until you need him to be. He is the great I am. He can be everything and everything. But in these moments of our life, when there is a void, when there is a space, that's when we see it the clearest. This is when we understand that she wasted all of her money. And maybe you wasted all of your strength and you've been trying to stop doing X, Y, Z. And it's until the point that you say, I got nothing left to give, that that's where God meets you. And that's where God begins to operate in your life. And that's where things start to happen. But as Christians, we don't like the process. We want the beautiful story. I want the horse and carriage. I want the happily ever laughter. But there is a moment that you got to get to breaking. There has to be a moment of crushing. There has to be a moment where I don't got nothing left to do. God is not intimidated by your screaming. God is not intimidated by your doubts. God is not intimidated by your tears. In fact, the Bible says that he is approached, that he he loves a broken and a contrite heart. It's in that moment where you feel like you have nothing left, that those are the moments that God shows up. I don't know if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or you're watching at a later time on the website, but I want you to put some praying hands. I want you to put some hands up, some praying hands right now. If you've experienced experience God in your most broken moments, if in those moments where you felt like you had nothing left, you saw that God showed up, that God came through and he rescued you. Come on, have you ever had a moment where you spent everything that you had and all of a sudden God came through in the midst of it? It's in those moments that we see God the clearest. The Bible says that this woman, she sees all of the issues, but it's just one moment that changes everything because everything is going wrong. And in one second, everything can flip the very same way that one moment you can be having fun with your friends and you can get a text message that destroys everything that happened, all the joy, all the excitement. But on the flip side, you can be having a really bad day and receive a a text message that lifts up your spirit because this thing went through. They approved that. They allowed for you to do this. That money's coming in. These are the moments that change everything. And it's in a split second. This is the God that we serve, that he doesn't abandon you, that he doesn't leave you, but it's in, a, it's in a split second. She sees her moment. The Bible says she pushes through the crowd and she grabs the hem of his garment. 
Now, I want you to understand this hem of his garment probably has been preached up, down, left, right, upside down, every way. I guarantee you, Pastor Jason, I probably preached this a thousand different times in a thousand different ways in such a beautiful, remarkable way. Praise the Lord. But this hem, it was dirty. This hem was disgusting, if I'm honest with you. Why? Because here it is that this was part of the gown or, or part of the robe that Jesus, that all the disciples, that people wore during this time. And during the Palestinian cobblestone, there was excrement, there was feces and, and different things that animals would leave and, and people would spit. And it was dirty. And this thing would just walk through it. And time after time, day after day, week after week, they would walk. And the bottom, the hem, which is the very bottom piece of it, would get dirty. Naturally, to think about it, if you're walking with something and you have it hitting the ground, it gets dirty and it gets nasty. But the Bible says that she touches the hem of his garment and immediately Jesus turns and said, what just happened? For I felt like like power has left from me. She was healed immediately. Remember what I told you that it just it just takes a second and God can move in just a second. This woman is healed immediately by touching a garment, a piece of cloth that is dirty, has been walking through everything that you can imagine. If God can do a miracle in a woman's life that has spent everything over the last 12 years with a piece of cloth, how much more can he do with you? Because I want you to understand it has nothing to do with the cloth and it has nothing to do with you. It's all about who that person or that cloth is tied to. Come on, if you're tied to Jesus, if you're hooked up to Jesus, then that power flows through you. Let me tell you that the very same strength that raised Jesus from the dead is living inside of you. That that very same God of miracles, sign and wonders, that that's not monuments and memories of things that have happened in the past. But that is the very expectation that the world is groaning with today. That it wants to see the manifestation of you and me walking in power. That me and you become the conduits of the very power of God. Come on, if you believe that, throw an amen in that text chat. Throw an amen in your checks. Whatever it is that you're doing right now, just say amen to the person who's next to you right now. I ain't to a loud crowd in a while, man. I just want to scream and kick things. So I'm, I'm going to get excited. But I want you to understand that this is the God that we're living in, that the power and the strength is living inside of you, that if he can do it through a piece of cloth, how much more can he do with your life, your surrender life, your tied life, your life that is in him, that you are the temple of the living God? Jesus turns and he says, yo, something happened. Power came out of me. And Peter's slick. Peter's that guy that is always going to get in trouble. Like, if it was me, I would have got written out the Bible because I would have said that dumb stuff. Yo, Peter, all these people around you, bro, you talking about who touched you? Like, yo, look at all this. And Jesus said, I, no, no, I, I know because power came out of me. And I think it is a clear indictment, not only to the people that were around there, hundreds of people that were around them, but I truly believe that it's an indictment to the church of 2020. That we know the songs. We know the scriptures. We know what to say. We know how to look in the back of the Bible and read 40 different scriptures they have to do on depression, but still live a depressed life. That we're around him, but we're not pulling the power of him. Living Waters in the National Church, Living Waters Church, don't be that type of church. Don't be that type of person. We're not going to be it. We're going to be the type of people that we're going to draw the power out from God. We're not going to rub up on him. We're not going to touch him and not receive any of the power. We're going to see God and the manifestation of his glory in this season like never before. August 2nd, August 3rd, and from then forward, you're going to begin to watch God move. That Monday when you go back to work on August 3rd, you're going to begin to see God do some amazing things in your life. Why? Because we're not just going to touch and just rub on Jesus. No, we're going to pull the power out of him and you're going to watch as things happen immediately. The Bible says that he turns to her and he says, woman, your daughter, your faith has made you well. Daughter, I want you to understand because I don't want you to just pass this. Daughter, just a few verses before, this was called the woman with the issue of blood. Have we ever identified ourselves with our issues? Just because you smoked weed doesn't make you a drug addict. Just because you lied doesn't make you a liar. But we identify with these things. And I think that, that that is a true statement, but I think we take it a step further sometimes because not only do we identify with these statements or the sins that we've done, the things that we've done we think we have become, but I also believe that we begin to treat God that way. God, I've messed up so many relationships. Just give me anything. Like, I don't care who you give me. Like, God, I've quit so many jobs and I've done so many things that, Lord, just give me anything because I'm a, I'm a quitter and, uh, God, I'm a sinner and, God, I, I, I lost too 
too much and God, I watch too much bad stuff and God, I do too many bad things. I need you to just treat me the way that you need to treat me according to my sins. But come on, don't we love this God that doesn't meet you where you are? The Bible says that in while you were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly, that he who knew no sin became sin so that you might become the righteousness of God, that you are not the things that you've done, but that you are the righteousness of God. Come on, the picture of the cross is a Jesus who is dying. The Bible says that his father has to turn his face from him. Sin is a stench into his nostrils. The book of Isaiah says, the Bible says that Jesus turns and says, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? He forsook him because he had to look down and see my sin upon him. But yet the same God that takes my sin and places it on Jesus in a beautiful exchange, he takes everything that's good about Jesus and he puts it on me and I become the righteousness of God and you become the righteousness of God. This is the God that we serve. That he no longer calls us a person with an issue, but he calls us sons, daughters. That means that you're an heir. He changes our identity in just a swift move. But yet there are people who are watching right now that I told you I'd come back to you. That you feel like you've been walking with Jesus. It feels like everything has gone upside down and you don't know what to do. You feel like God has abandoned you. And he's not answering your prayers no more. He's not walking with you anymore. And it just feels like there's an interruption that has happened. This woman with the issue of blood turned daughter. She gets healed. The Bible says that in the midst of this, that one of the servants of Jairus comes and said, don't bother the master anymore. Your daughter is dead. And beautiful Jesus, the one that we serve, who is omnipresent, who is in so many different places. I have thought, and as your pastor has, I have thought and made decisions by the hundreds I feel a day. My mind has been split into so many different things. And I know Pastor Jason, I know Pastor Karen, that they have and the team down there, I know that there's so many decisions and so many things that go that you sit, you're overwhelmed in this season. And let me tell you something, this season, though you are at home and you're in quarantine, we're calling everybody, we're making sure that everybody's good and the people that you miss, now they hate you and they'll never go back to your church because you forgot to call them, but you're trying to call and you're trying to, ch you're chasing after people and you're just, man, I love you and I'm with you and your heart is breaking and you're getting up in the morning and you're praying for people and your heart, your desire as a pastor, as your pastors are doing right now in this season, our minds are stretched and we miss people and there's things that we don't do the right way and there's failures and there's decisions that we make that are wrong. And we're just human. But look at the picture of Jesus that in the midst of dealing with so many people, Peter who getting slick with him, the people around them that are rubbing and they're not pulling any power, the woman with the issue of blood turned daughter, he's changing identities, he's doing all these things while Jarius is having a conversation with his servant and in the middle of it, the Bible says that he turns to him and he said, don't be afraid. Just believe she will be made well. In just a second, immediately, the God that we serve, an interruption is shown, but yet he says, pardon the interruption, don't be afraid, just believe she shall be made well. The season has turned your life upside down. I want to tell you something, don't be afraid, just believe it shall be made well. I came on this live, I came on this word, I, I needed something, it's fire in the summer, I needed something. Don't be afraid, just believe. It will be made well. But you don't understand my situation. Not that easy. Don't be afraid. Just believe it will be made well. You need a word from God today. I believe that the power of the Holy Spirit is speaking directly to you. Don't be afraid. Just believe it shall be made well. He turns to Jarius and the very words that he says to bring him peace. I believe that the altar of peace, that the prince of peace is speaking into your life today. Don't be afraid. Just believe it will be made well. Jesus turns and begins to walk with Jairus again. And the trek happens where they get to the house. When they get to the house, there's sadness. And here it is where things are just upside down. The girl is dead. A 12-year-old daughter is dead. I can't even imagine that. The Bible says that Jesus comes in. And here's where I want to get super practical. Pull out your notebook because these are some issues. These are some things that you're going to have to take some steps in. Now. This is some homework that you're going to have to do. But I believe that they're going to bring breakthrough as we begin to re-enter, as we begin to open up the world, as we get into the next season. I think you're going to need these things. So write them down. Number one, the Bible says that he took everybody who was in that room. They, they were laughing at him because he said, yo, she's not dead. She's sleeping. And they ridiculed him. They were laughing at him. And I know that that's sometimes your life. 
when you feel like, yo, things are going to get better, while everybody's gloom and doom and losing and, and dying and so many things are happening, you're still confessing and believing the hope of God and you're still anointing your family and you're still believing God's best in this season while everybody is saying, yo, this is the worst that we, from the racial tension to everything that's going on right now in our nation, you're still believing in God and you're still prophesying and you're still praying over your family and you're still believing and to them, they're laughing. And they're making fun of it because they see your situation as something that's dead. But you said, honey, I'm about to come back to life. It just takes a couple of seconds. Just relax. I serve a God of the immediate. And just a moment, things are going to flip. The Bible says that those very same people, he grabbed them. And the Bible says that he, he kicked them out. Number one, you got to get rid of some people. And you got to get rid of some things. There's some habits that you may have picked up during this season of quarantine. And I want you to understand that without the power of God, you're not going to be able to do those things. But with the power of God, you will be able to do. You got to draw on Jesus and receive the power to be healed immediately from the vices, from the alcohol, the addiction, the pornography, the gossiping, the anger, the bitterness, the hatred. These things that you may have started to build up and unable to process, you got to get rid of this. But I think you need to unfollow some people. You need to close Facebook for a little while. You need to get your face in the book. You need to eliminate Instagram for a little while. You need to get offline and stop looking at all the news reports. In this season, you got to kick some stuff out because that stuff is not feeding your faith. I believe, number one, you got to kick some stuff out, but I also believe that you need to bring some things in. The Bible says that he brought Peter, John, and, and, and Peter, James, and John into the room with him and the girl's mother and father. You got to bring some people into it. You got to have some conversations. Maybe you got to pull Pastor Jason and say, I've been struggling with this. Here's some issues that I've been having. I need your help in this season. I can't get rid of this. I feel like I do, and then I get wrapped up again. There's some leaders, there's some small group leaders. There are different people that God has provided through Living Waters Church that can actually help you in this season. And for you, it's easy to kick everybody out. You're an introvert, you love doing that. But it's gonna be hard for you to actually allow people in. The Bible says that God is light and in him there is no darkness. There's some things that you got to confess and some things that you got to get it out. Moving into the next season, you got to bring people into the conversation and they need to begin to hear the things that you're going with and that you're struggling. That doesn't make you weak. That makes you human. It makes you human. But if you try to do it on your own, you're going to fail every single time. The Bible says that he kicks the people out. He brings James, Peter and John into the room. Then he turns to the young girl. The Bible says that he stretches his hand forward and he says, little girl, arise. And I feel the power of the Holy Spirit today speaking over your life today. And there was a hand that stretched out to you and it's saying, come alive. You've been laying there way too long. You've been sitting there way too long. Your mind has been thinking there way too long. It's time for you to step out of it. You don't have to wait until August 2nd when we open the doors of Living, Church, Living Water Church. You don't have to wait for us to get back into a building. Today, the Bible says that you can become free. Today, the Bible says that God is stretching his hand to you and that he wants to bring you back to life. Chino, I gotta wait. I gotta stop smoking. I gotta stop drinking. Once I do all these things, I don't wanna be a hypocrite. Once I get all these things done, then I'm gonna come to church. Then I'm gonna come to Jesus. Then I'm gonna give him my life. You're never going to be able to do that. If you had the strength to stop any of those things, then you would be God. But you can't. It's a cycle and a vicious cycle that the enemy begins to bombard your mind and set demons around and encamp around you to think, I'm going to stop doing this before I come to God. God is the only one that can change you. And I believe that today God has his hand stretched out towards you and he's saying little boy little girl man woman arise today God wants to bring you back to life Chino. thank you pastor Chino what an anointed message that you have just brought let me pray with those right now because this was a fire branded message for such a time as this for our fire in the summer many people and I agree with pastor Chino have, has, have walked away from their faith they put their faith on the back burner during this time when we need everyone to stand together during this faith, during this time that we're in this, during this time of this uh, coronavirus and all the things that our nation is being faced with right now. I agree with Pastor Chino. It's time to walk away from the news. It's time to walk away from social media. It's time for us to get into the face of God and get away from Facebook. I agree with that statement so wholeheartedly. We have been following the lies of the enemy and allowing the enemy to use those devices to stir up our, our emotions, to get us out of our faith and put our eyes on man. Right now, I want to pray with you right now as I pray in agreement with Pastor Chino in this message to stir up that faith in you and also believe in Jesus Christ that he's going to do what he has set out to do. 
We always talk about praying, but we all we don't we don't we fail to teach about believing, and that is the thing that we want to step into right now is to step into that belief factor that we're going to believe that Jesus is a man who said that his word would not return void, and we're going to walk it out according to that faith that we have in his word. Right now, in Jesus' name, I pray for everyone watching this broadcast. And Father, I pray for everyone that do not that does not know you, Jesus Christ, as and has not made you their Lord and Savior and is not the Lord and Savior right now. I pray repentance upon them right now to return back to their first love in Jesus name. And I pray for those who have who have have fallen aside or fallen asleep during this time. I pray that right now the fire of the Holy Ghost will come in and begin to stir the gifts that are within them to begin that movement force that movement force for such a time as this. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. I like to conclude every broadcast as well as I always like to include every service at Living Waters International Church with a blessing. And I wanna bless you right now as we get ready to go in. We're like, we're like two weeks away from August 2nd. We're looking at the numbers daily and they're going up and up and up. And we're hoping that we can return August 2nd. And we'll be coming out this week with an announcement regarding that, if we're gonna be able to do that or not. But we're, but keep keep your ears tuned to your emails. If you gotta get our emails and text messages, also right here on our Facebook page, as well as our YouTube channel. If you're watching this, we can release that information out. So be watching for any information coming up this week or next week regarding returning us back in August 2nd if we choose to delay further uh, further beyond that for safety reasons. But right now, I want to bless you, Living Waters International Church, and bless you with ability. And I bless you with an abundance. I bless you that angels this week will go with you. I bless you with assurance of God's love and God's grace, a clear direction and a controlled and disciplined life. I bless you with courage, creativity, and I bless you with spiritual perception of God's truth. I bless you with faith, with the favor of God and the favor of man. I bless you with good health, and I bless you with a good spouse. I bless you that your hands, that your hands, they will be used to bless others. I bless you with happiness, fulfillment, and contentment. I bless you with hope and a good and positive outlook on life. I bless you with a listening ear. I bless you with longevity. I bless you with an obedient heart and obedient spirit. Peace, pleasant speech, and pleasant personality. I bless you with promotion, protection, provision, safety, and strength. I bless you with success and trust, and I bless you with wisdom. And I bless you that this week and the remainder of this year, that you will know without a shadow of, 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 of a doubt that no matter what comes up against this world, that when it comes to the body of Christ, when it comes to sons and daughters of the Most High God, that God's goodness and mercy shall chase us down and follow us all the days of our life. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or even think according to the power that dwells and works inside of us. To him be the glory through Christ Jesus and at Living Waters International Church forever and ever and ever and ever throughout all generations forever and ever and ever and ever. God bless you.